I was not completely new to soldering when I started in the FPV game, but pretty soon after I started to fix drones for my customers and build more drones for myself, I realized that I needed to improve my skills on soldering. So I went to the internet and I checked what everyone was saying and I actually got some good tips here and there. And today what I want to try to do is get some of those tips, like the best ones, the ones that are helping me the most, and get you into this video to have something very summarized and help you guys that are starting with FPV and needs to solder for the first time, have an idea how you can get your soldering skills better. Before I show you what I have today, let's give a few seconds to my sponsor. For as little as $5, you can get up to 10 printed circuit boards for your special projects. You just need to partner with the right company. PCV Way helps you bring those ideas into reality by giving you the chance to manufacture your circuit boards in a professional manner for a very affordable price and pretty quickly. Go and check them out. They offer many services. They collaborate with the open source community and your first order is almost for free. The first thing that I want to talk about are tweezers or anything that helps you get those cables into the right position. I remember when I was watching Joshua Barwell talking about this and he recommend these medical tweezers because they can close and keep in one place and hold your cable while you are doing your work. So I went directly and I got one of these, but then after trying a few times, I realized that whenever I closed my tweezer like this, I started to hurt the cable. So I decided not to keep using it. Maybe I'm using it wrong. And if I am, leave me a comment and tell me how I should be using these ones. But in reality, I went and I got these other kind of tweezers. Uh, they are smaller, easier to control, very precise. I bought a good pair because you can find this like very cheap in many places, but I went and I bought something of good quality. I have two styles, this one with, a, uh, with an angle that helps me get in, and this one straight that can also get into certain different scenarios. You can go in and you can get the cable with a lot of precision and hold it in place while you are soldering. These tweezers helps with two things. One is to hold the cable in the right place, going through small gaps in between all the cables when you are building your drone. And the second one is that sometimes these cables get very hot, especially if you are soldering like a ground cable. And then you need to have something to help you so you don't burn your fingers. Number two in my list is flux. When I was soldering at the university, I never used flux. I normally use my tin and directly my, iron, my soldering iron and that was it. But now I know that flux is what helps you get a very organized, very nice, shiny solder piece. So using flux is almost a must if you want your pads to look good, your soldering pads to look good, and to look shiny like whenever you get one from a manufacturer. The tip that I'm going to give you is the following. I normally add flux on the pad and a little bit also on the cable after they've been thin. This helps when I'm actually connecting both of them to get things much nicer. The other tip around flux that I'm going to give you is that sometimes, let's say that you try to solder the first time, it didn't work out, you warm up again in order to remove it, and then you try again to solder back. At that moment, it might be that all the flux that you had inside it's dis has disappeared. So my tip is that every time that you're going to connect something, even if you disconnect and you're trying to connect again, add a little bit of flux. It's not gonna hurt and it's going to help you. Flux comes in different ways you have a flux pen that I've never used, but a lot of people recommend. Um, I have this paste that I normally take something like a screwdriver and put in place. It's not the best to be honest because it gets a bit too much on the place, 
but um, I'm using it today. It works. It gets a little bit messy, but it's not a big problem. There is other people that has a syringe and they can use it very precisely to put just a little bit on the pad that you're working or on the cable that you're working. And I think that's the best way that you can do in order to get very clean and very professional looking soldering. But again, I have not used those ones because I'm waiting for this one to finish before I buy something new. Something that I learned with time and experience in here by soldering is that sometimes when you're soldering, you see that the tin gets like pointy. It's not round and it's not shiny. That is actually uh, showing that you don't have enough flux in there. Whenever you get this pointy thing, just add a little bit of flux and go again with your soldering iron and you're gonna see that it gets round and shiny. Also, shiny is important. When you see that your soldering is not shiny, that also means that you don't have enough flux in there. Put a little bit more flux and go back a little bit of time there and that it's gonna help you. Another one in my list is the soldering iron. You don't need to have a super very professional soldering iron just to do FPV soldering, but there is a minimum. You know those ones that you can buy almost like in the supermarket, that they are kind of thick and big and they don't have any kind of temperature control? Well, that's the one that you don't really want. You want something that at least have temperature control. They are both digital and analog versions of temperature control soldering iron. And I had for a while an analog one, which makes the work. I mean, you can get through that, through your work with that kind of ironing without any problem. But then I went and I bought this hacko that I have here, which you can control very precisely what's the, temper the temperature that you want. And the work was much easier. What's, it, it got much cleaner. It was very easy just to come in and quickly with a kind of a one second touch, you get your cable solder in place. So having a temperature control iron, it's going to help quite a lot with your soldering skills. Temperature is another thing that I think is important to know about when you are soldering. If you go around and you check some YouTube videos, you see that some people talk about using 400 Celsius, some people talk about 300 or 350. In my case, I've been doing this for a while and I think that I can summarize it like this. If you're going to solder a cable, like a receiver cable or a VTX cable, those kind of thin, small cables, I normally use 350 Celsius for that. It's enough to go quickly and just touch it and you will get it done. But on the other hand, if you're going to solder, uh, let's say a power cable or even sometimes a motor cable, there I recommend you to go to 400 Celsius. And even more, if you are soldering the ground of the power, which normally requires much more heat, there I'm going to recommend you to look at having a bigger tip on your soldering iron so you get more area, you warm up more area at the same time. This tip that I have here, I, I normally use it for almost everything. But if I'm doing the negative or the ground of the power cable, I need to put it kind of on the side so I get as much area touching that cable as possible in order to get it to get the job done. So I use basically two temperatures, 350 and 400. Small cables, 350, uh, bigger cables, 400. I have a friend that is kind of a professional in this area and he tells me that he uses 400 all the time. He's, you just need to be a little bit more careful and when you're doing a small cable, go in quickly and just touch it and you get the job done as well. But I think that's kind of an advanced skill I'm not there yet, but if you want to try it, why not? Give it a try. You maybe learn about it and you can do it yourself. Another tip is to use helping hands. Helping hands come in very different shapes. You have these ones that look like a, an octopus and you can bend those arms, whatever you want. Or you have something like this one too, which is uh, based on ma magnets. 
you can change them, you can rotate them, you can put in different places. It's very useful. But if you don't have any of those tools or you don't want to buy any of this tool, you have another thing that is quite cheap and is as useful as many of those ones, which is this kind of putty uh, rub. It, it looks like a plastiline and you can just attach it to your table, get your FC or whatever you're using very close to it or like fix on, in place by that. You can take another piece of that putty and use to hold the cable and you can do exactly the same things that you do with the, the helping hands, but close to the table. I tend to use this putty more than the helping hands because the helping hands keep your FC and your cables kind of floating in the air. And things can get more difficult if you have if you don't have them uh, very straight. So by putting everything on the table helps me get things straight. And since I have very shaky hands, it's much better for me to do it that way. And at the same way, it's very cheap. So it's a tip for you. Last tip that I have for you today is actually how you should think about this. I mean, soldering, how does it actually work? Because in the beginning, I thought that if you had a, a, a pad, you would put on top of it the cable, and then you will put the, tip, the tin on top and warm up the tin in order to uh, melt on top of the cable and the pad. But it's actually not nothing like that. In reality, or, or the way that you should be thinking in order for this to look good and you, and you get a very good soldering, is that you have to tin the pad first with some flux on it. You tin the cable with some flux on it. You put those two things together and then you add heat between the two of them and then they will melt each other. They will melt inside each other. If you do it like that, then you're gonna go get very good results. All right. Hopefully this is useful for some of you that are starting and need some tips around soldering your FPVs or your flight controllers and those things. I hope you enjoy the video and hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching.